Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie at Cameron MCNZ on Twitter. And I want to talk to you about creating a UiPath orchestrator process. And I want to show you how to do this right from scratch. So I'm going to start with nothing in orchestrator. I'm going to create the orchestrator service, push a little Hello World application from the client to orchestrator, create the robot, create the environment, set up the machine, and then finally create the process and run it. So I want to show you how to create a process in UiPath Orchestrator and run it. Now, I'm going to start from scratch here. I've got a brand new UiPath Orchestrator environment here. Nothing's been created. And so to kick things off, I need to add a new tenant. I'm going to call it Insights Service because it's an orchestration service. Accept the basic number of licenses and say thank you very much from UiPath for providing them. And when the orchestrator service is created, I'll click on the blue orchestrator link, which will take me to the new user interface for UI orchestrator. Now, it's a process I want to create because it's the process that runs the robots, but I need a robot to run. So I'm going to start off by creating a brand new robot. Now, if you try and create a brand new robot right off the bat, it'll say, you know what? In order to do this, you actually have to use the classic interface. And so right up there, see where it says shared modern folder? I need to click on that, click on default, and you notice it goes back to classic folder. And that's gonna make things a lot easier to do in the classic folder. So with the classic folder selected, I'm gonna head over to robots and create a brand new robot. And it's gonna be a standard robot. Now, when I create the robot, I actually need to provide the name of my local machine. So if I type in host name here, or even who am I, you'll see that my local computer is named ThinkStation and I'm logged in under the user visitor. The machine name has to map to the machine that you want to run the process on. So I'm going to name that ThinkPad or ThinkStation because that's the name of my computer. Now you usually do this in a separate step. I've got no need to do this in a separate step, but the tool says, you know, usually you do this separately. Do you want me to do that step for you in creating the machine object? I click this provision machine think station to have UiPath do that for me. Now I need to name the robot. I'm going to call it Insights Robot, and I'll call it Insight Robot Description for the description. And the type has to be unattended. Make sure you've got an unattended type selected. Now when it's unattended, you actually need to provide the domain and username. That is the name of your computer and the username that you're going to use to log in to, the, to run the service on your local machine. So who am I gives you that information and it's just ThinkStation Visitor. Now the other thing you need to do is provide your password here. And this is the password for your Windows operating system. It's, it's for the machine on which the process is going to run. It's not your uh, UI Cloud Orchestrator password. So I type mine in there. I often get that wrong. If the, if the program doesn't run in a minute, um, I'll have to go back and update my password. Sometimes I type it in wrong. Okay, so that creates the robot. Step number two is adding the robot to an environment. I don't know why this isn't done all in the same step, but you have to create an environment object. Click create. It says, do you want to associate that robot you created with this environment? And I say yes. A lot of people miss this because there's it's robots at the top, right? I'm still in that robots environment. It's robots at the top, and this environment isn't very pronounced, right? Like it's the contrast and the text isn't really great. So people often forget that step. So that ends up setting up the robot that we want to run. And of course, uh, part of creating that robot was creating this ThinkStation machine. Uh, it always puts in this uh, default machine. I don't like that in there. Now, this ThinkStation machine uh, represents my local machine on where processes will run. Um, if I actually go onto my local machine and open the UiPath Assistant, you can find that in the same folder where maybe you've installed UiPath Studio. This actually needs, it actually needs to know under orchestrator settings what the URL is and what the machine key is in order to move code from your client machine from your UiPath Studio to Orchestrator. And of course, I need to do that because the code that I want to run inside this process is still in UiPath Studio. I need to publish it. 
So I need the orchestrator URL. The URL is everything before orchestrator underscore in the URL there. So I'll highlight everything before orchestrator underscore. And then the machine key is obtained right there. So under machines, I've got ThinkStation, which was just created with my robot. I copy the key and then I paste that long hexadecimal key in here. I can then click connect and now my local machine, which has UiPath Studio on it and all of my code and it's where I want to run my robots, is connecting to the cloud. See, I've got a little green light saying that it's connected. I can now come into UiPath Studio. I've got a little Hello World application here. I'll show it to you. And I'll just run like this. It says, Hello World. And I want to publish all of this code. So I'll click publish. It'll say, do you want to publish uipath.helloworld? I'll say yes. It says, you want to send it to orchestrator? Of course I do. I click the publish button. It goes up. And then if I actually come back to orchestrator and click on packages under machines, you'll actually see there it is. It says it was published just a few seconds ago. So now I have my robot configured. I have my machine connected from my local development environment, my local machine connected to the cloud. I've deployed code. Now it's this code that I want to run in this robot. And that's done as a process. So I come over to processes. I click plus, And it says, hey, what package do you want to run? And I say, hey, it's the UiPath package. And what environment do you want to run it in? And of course, I created that insights environment that has the uh, insights robot attached to it. I think everything's done there. And I say, okay, yeah, create that process. So now that is the creation of that process. So that's all created. And now how do you run it? All you have to do to run it is click play. Now again, I keep typing my password in incorrectly. So let's see if this is going to run. I'll click play. It says, what robot do you want to run this on? You could provision automatically, dynamically. I'm going to ask for this specific robot. It's the only robot to run it on. I'll click start. It'll say the command is being sent. And I must have put my password in correctly this time because now hello world is coming up. And so that's UiPath. You know, that's running in the cloud. But this cloud orchestrator is controlling my local machine because this hello world came up on my local machine. And uh, you can actually see in the jobs here, that was it run successfully. If I run this one more time, I'll click play, choose the robot, click start. I'm going to go back up to jobs. Then you can see it actually says running. So this message box is not part of the internet. It's not part of the browser. That's running on my local machine. But this is connected to UiPath Orchestrator. See there it says the state is running. When I click OK, it'll actually update Orchestrator in the cloud and now say successful. Um, and then that is the key to creating a process and running that process in the cloud. Take And that includes taking your code, pushing it to Orchestrator, creating the robot, creating the environment, registering the machine, creating the process, and then finally manually running it. And there you go. That's everything you need to know about creating that process and running that process in UiPath Orchestrator. If you enjoyed this tutorial, why don't you head over to theserverside.com. I'm the editor-in-chief over there. I've got lots of great tutorials on enterprise software development. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on YouTube.